Uh, good to see you. So, I mean, this market over the last four or five months has done a lot of what people said it probably had to do, uh, right? S&P down almost 20 percent, high to low. NASDAQ down 30 percent. The average S&P stock down 30. We've got valuations cut from, what, 22 times earnings down towards 16. Big question is, I guess, is that enough to improve the risk reward uh, looking out from here for, for equities? I think it certainly has if you have a longer term horizon. So just to get back to the previous highs we were at in, on January 3rd, which, by the way, the, the S&P never fails to do over time, that would be a return of 22 percent over a year. If it takes us a couple of years, that would be an annualized return of 11 percent. So certainly a lot better returns from here on the equity side, as well as on the bond side, now that we have had nearly a doubling in the 10-year yield, and we have much better starting yields across fixed income. The issue is, because valuations were so high to begin with, the multiple contraction that we've seen on the equity side only brings valuations to average levels. So the big concern is perhaps there's more of an overshoot that we could see on the downside before eventually we get those better returns that we're expecting. So at the moment, when we speak to, to a lot of our clients, to investors, there's still very much um, a lack of conviction of actually increasing positions. There's a bit of a wait and see mode over the next couple of months while we get a little bit more clarity on inflation rates, growth and valuations. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, the market spends has spent very little time historically right at the long term average valuation. It reverts beyond the mean and, as you say, overshoots. Um, you talk about the next couple of months because there really is this perception out here that, you know, risk assets might be capped, right? Almost no matter what happens, the Fed is going to raise rates uh, by the end of July by a full percentage point, maybe more from there. Some inklings that they're softening up uh, the, the outlook after, after July. Uh, and then you, you have this idea here that maybe earnings estimates uh, are the, the next shoe to drop in terms of coming down. How does that all play out for you? I think it really speaks to there just being a bit of a wait and see mode over the summer until we can have a bit more conviction come the fall. So we need to see whether inflation really convincingly comes down. That For that, we need a string of CPI and PCE reports to really feel like we hit a peak in the March inflation levels. The Fed seems to be on cruise control over the summer before they reassess the pace and the direction uh, over August and come the September meeting. For the economy, we're in a bit of a nuanced, confusing mode at the moment where we're having a hard time distinguishing between normalizing and crashing. So we need a few more strings of economic data over the next few months. And lastly, on the earnings side, as you mentioned, uh, we need a little bit more conviction around those earnings estimates. Companies, analysts still seem extremely optimistic, whereas investors feel like some of those estimates still need to come down over the next few months. So that's why it does feel like there's a lack of conviction, a bit of a wait until the fall. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.